I feel hurt, disrespected, threatened, unsafe. As a matter, as a member of this Legislative Assembly. After my remarks, I walked over and shake the hand of the member from Burroughs and a hug, uncle. Went to shake the hand of the leader of the opposition, at which point there was a delay in standing. Stood up, reached for my hand, aggressively pulled me in, physically squeezed my hand. I'm a big guy, I can take it. He has a very strong handshake. Pulled me in, close to his ear, and the incident I'm about to rec recount is a clear violation of privilege as noted by the House Commons procedure and practice on page 83 and is a prima facie violation of the privilege of members of this House. I am raising this at the earliest possible moment that I'm able to. As you may have noticed from my ministerial statement earlier, I was visibly shaken and delayed in my comments. I needed time to exit the chamber, clear my head, and gather my thoughts for this incident that just happened a few hours earlier. When the Leader of the Opposition grabbed my hand, physically pulled me in as I went out to shake it, the comments I'm reluctant to share, uh, I feel as though I must. I warn uh, the language is going to be offensive and profane um, for the members in the House, uh, for the people at home, for the media. Um, the Leader of Opposition pulled me in and said, you piece of shit, how dare you politicize this fucking event? Oh. What you did is fucking wrong. We are never inviting you again to a fucking event. I, I tried to back away from it. I'm a big guy. I could have probably backed away if I really wanted to make a scene. And I leaned over. We were close to close. said, now is not the time for this. We can talk about this later. Uh, and he would not let me leave. Held my hand in. Again, repeated. You piece of shit. How dare you do this? I dare you politicize this. We invited you here. After what was an awkward, what felt like five minutes, it was probably only one or two, um, he let go. I walked away back to the other side. I sat down, um, not sure what to do. When someone in this building calls you a piece of shit and swears at you, let alone the, the leader of the opposition. And I'm a big guy. Um, I, c I can take abuse. I was a professional football player for 10 years. I wasn't, I wasn't afraid for my life. I'm a big guy, I can defend myself. For 10 years, I took a lot larger insults on the field and physical abuse playing football. Um, but not when I'm coming to work as an elected official. Not when I'm at such a joyous, it was such a great, great celebration of the Turban Day. Uh, laughing. Celebrating how far we've come as a Punjabi man, with my Punjabi colleagues, and to be called a piece of shit. Um, this isn't just for me. I can handle myself. Um, but I am, as you can see, I'm, I'm emotionally shaken by this. I was not expecting that. Intimidation attempts, insulting language, um, and to what I believe a, a physical shove at the end of it. It takes a lot to move me. You can shove me as hard as you want, and I probably wouldn't move. Uh, but when you're leaving the, when we left the handshake, there was a shove in the stomach. And wow. Like for someone else, it might move them. For me, it's not going to move me. But I felt it. If this can happen to me at six foot four, two hundred plus pounds. It can happen to anyone. I expect more. I come to work and. I would like to be treated with respect. I know inside this chamber things get heated and we say things back and forth. Uh, but outside of this, it's, it's, and even in here. Um, I didn't expect the leader of the opposition for his actions, intimidation, aggressive language, or physicality. Uh, therefore, I move seconded by the MLA for Fort Richmond that this matter be immediately referred to a permanent standing committee of this House for investigation.
Order. Order. The Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Thanks, Madam Speaker. I do want to address the commentary uh, from my uh, colleague from Fort White. Um, so I do beg your indulgence so that I can uh, run through a few uh, key pieces of information. I want to begin by apologizing to my colleague from the boroughs, which I have done already privately. Um, I do dispute the facts. Significant details uh, were incorrect about what the member for Fort White said. However, what we do agree on is that we had a tense exchange earlier today. And this was neither the time. Order! Order! Order. We had a tense exchange. It was a tense verbal exchange. We uh, should have found a different time, a different place to follow up on this matter. Madam Speaker, I would ask for uh, the ability to address you on this matter without heckling from the other side. Order. So again, the Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you. So I apologize to my colleague from the boroughs. It was neither the time nor the place. We should have uh, sought an opportunity uh, to address the concerns that I had uh, later on. So I would like to apologize to my colleague from Fort White for this uh, tense exchange that we had earlier. I can tell that he is upset, and for that I am truly sorry. However, what happened between the two of us was partisan bickering, to be blunt. Oh. Order. 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 I would remind members that this is a matter of privilege. This is the uh, not the time for heckling or comments. Uh, this is really the time that we really carefully need to listen to what is being said. So I'm going to ask the members to please respectfully hear what is being said so that I can properly rule on this. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Again, so we shook hands. As we shook hands, I told the member for Fort White that he should not have made partisan comments while he was speaking at the event. Earlier in the event, Order. I had taken specific uh, time to say this event goes across party lines. Uh, the member for Fort White at said event uh, said that, you know, not only should the NDP banner be there, you should have a Liberal banner, a PC banner, and he also talked more about the PC government. So I told him, as we were speaking, uh, that he should not have brought the partisanship into that. And I said, we took a step on the high road to invite Order. him to our event. And then he went and did that, uh, you know, course of action that he was addressing. So again, Order. I addressed this to him directly. Order. Order. I know this can be a tense issue, but I think we need to be listening to everything. I need to hear everything because I'm going to have to rule on this. So I'm going to ask everybody, uh, although emotions may be high on this one, this is really one that I need to be able to hear everything, and uh, everybody should be able to hear everything because uh, um, this is what is expected when we have a matter of privilege. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition to conclude his statements. There's a bit more to share, Madam Speaker, and I do feel it's important so that you have the information. So we go back and forth. I said, you should not have said these partisan things. He comes back at me. He says, you have no class. We should address this at a different time. And then so I say, well, you should not have made these partisan comments. He then goes to attack uh, us for having an NDP banner at an NDP-sponsored event. My colleague from the Maples was beginning to speak. And so I turned and said, we should listen. And I said the name of the member for the Maples. To speak. That was the entirety of the exchange. At no time was there any swearing. At no time was there any name calling. At no 
time was there any swearing. At no time was there any name calling. And the interaction was that of words exchanged, albeit tensely, over Order. handshake. So I do apologize to my colleague from Fort White that uh, I didn't avail myself of the opportunity to seek a different time or a different place to share my thoughts. But that is the entirety of the exchange that took place earlier today. This occurred in a room full of people, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Right? within earshot of many, many other people, Madam Speaker. So I dispute the facts, but I am apologizing for the nature of uh, our exchange. Uh, and when it comes to the procedural matter at hand, this is something that took place outside of the legislative chamber. It is therefore not a matter of privilege. And uh, I would ask that you rule on this matter uh, as soon as you're able. Um, he has his version of events, I guess. I mean, I, I think I was pretty clear in how I laid out uh, how I felt, uh, what happened, uh, how I perceived the interaction. So, I mean, that's, that's where I'm at. I mean, how do you accept someone's apology when they deny the facts of what happened, right? Um, heartfelt apology, um, acknowledging the facts of what happened and the interaction of how it happened and how it shouldn't happen, how it can't happen, ever, L let alone in this building, uh, outside this building as an elected official. Uh, I mean, I, I think I made it pretty clear. I'm a big guy. I'm a strong guy. I can handle myself. Uh, but to have that happen in here is... Um, I don't even know what to say. I mean, you can you can answer that question yourself, Ian. You I think you just said the answer, right? I mean, didn't you? We all, we also, I wholeheartedly, with joy, supported the turban bill. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And the member from Burroughs, um, am I allowed to say his name out here? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Diljit Bar, uncle, I call him, uh, loved, loved it, loved it. Uh, we all supported it unanimously. The, the whole, everyone, PC, Liberal, NDP. Um, so I, I think you answered the question yourself. And my comments were that we all supported it. Uh, this is bigger than party politics. This is provincial. This is national. This is across the world. When all parties can work together, um, representation matters in all aspects, right? Not just color of people, sex, gender, orientation, parties. I was there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, a, that's, that's before the speaker now. Uh, so the speaker will rule on if it's a matter of privilege. Um, I don't have any comment to that other than uh, I wholeheartedly felt that was the earliest opportunity I could bring it up. Um, maybe I could have brought it up as soon as the session started, but I wasn't in the head space or physical spaces. People saw my ministerial statement. I was significantly delayed and emotional during that on a joyous ministerial statement. So I had to take a pause, reset, and it was at my earliest time I could present it. So it's before the speaker, and uh, we'll wait to hear what the speaker says. Good afternoon, folks. I just wanted to come and respond to some of what took place in uh, the chamber, as well as uh, earlier today. So at the noon hour, we had uh, a great uh, cul cultural and community event here uh, to celebrate uh, Turban Day. And so I want to acknowledge uh, my colleague Diljit Brar for his important work on this topic to educate Manitobans and to help celebrate uh, the Sikh faith uh, community. 
Uh, as you've no doubt heard later on, uh, Mr. Khan and I had a conversation. He had made some partisan commentary from the stage at this community event, and so when he approached me to shake my hand later on, I uh, told him that I did not appreciate the partisan commentary that he was making. And uh, when the issue was raised later on this afternoon in the chamber, I said I apologize because our exchange was tense. Probably wasn't the time or place. Um, mia culpa, if I had the opportunity to do it again, I simply should have told Mr. Khan, you know what, didn't appreciate some of what you had to say. Can we find some time later on today to address these concerns? So, I wanted to start with those comments. Happy to take uh, any and all questions. It's a, it's a heck of a discrepancy between the two recollections. Well, you're, you're saying there was no swearing and nothing physical. Yeah, that's right. Like, we shook hands. It was a tense exchange because, you know, I said I did not appreciate the partisan commentary that he was bringing to what was otherwise a very positive community event. And, uh, you know, Mr. Khan made uh, his assertion later on in the chamber. And, but no, there was no name calling or any of the other things that uh, he's alleging. So you do acknowledge though that the uh, interaction was not appropriate? Well, I think the interaction uh, was tense because there was a back and forth over the partisan commentary. And uh, in hindsight, I think at such a positive community event, I should have simply said, hey, we need to chat. Let's find an opportunity to do so later on today. No. Again, the name calling that was alleged, you know, this is not a profanity laced tirade. Um, the words were about, I do not appreciate the partisan comments being made. We took a chance to do uh, a step on the high road by inviting somebody from the PCs to speak at an event that we were organizing. You all know that this typically does not happen at legislative events. And so I said, you know, we took a step in this direction. I didn't appreciate the partisanship. Well, I leaned in to speak to him, I guess uh, I would say that, and it was to let him know that I didn't appreciate the partisan commentary that was being brought to an otherwise very positive and very successful event. Yeah. Well, I think everybody in the legislature uses their signage for the events that they host here. And so us using our backdrop is no different than a government using uh, the blue sign or blue backdrop that you'll see them use. This isn't the first time there's been concerns over physical uh, altercations between MLAs of different uh, political stripes. What is your assessment of what's happening in uh, this building? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's really important that everyone feels safe when they come to work, especially at the Manitoba Legislature. Uh, but uh, I've uh, described what took place. I addressed some partisan comments that Mr. Khan made at uh, an event that we hosted. I told him that I didn't appreciate that. The exchange became tense between the two of us. Uh, and um, I think it's clear that the PCs are now trying to take shots at me over that. No. Okay. Well, got some uh, comments on natural resources. No, I'm just kidding. See y'all later. <laughs>